safety improvements Durham School Services has made to school buses since the deadly Woodmore bus crash. And they are debating whether Durham's contract will be renewed or not. They would cut ties with them altogether. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Kelly McCarthy was at the work session tonight. She joins us now to bring us details. Kelly. Greg, Durham's contract is up in June, and some school board members have concerns with renewing it. But as they've learned tonight, they might not have a choice. Board members listened on as Assistant Superintendent Lee McDade listed off more than a dozen changes Durham says it's made since the deadly school bus crash. They completed onboard video reviews of all drivers. They now have cameras on, focused on their drivers as well as the other three cameras that were uh, already on, on board all buses. Durham is paying for 30 extra bus monitors to ride along the most difficult routes and rechecked driver's licenses and background checks for all of its part-time drivers. They agreed to pay for any and all hospital bills. Uh, they're paying for all counseling and support. Uh, they donated $50,000 to the Woodmore United Way Fund. But even with all of these improvements, many school board members are hesitant to give the school bus company another chance. I got a problem with uh, extending Durham. The board discussed other options, such as looking into independent contractors who would drive their own buses. Some say those drivers would be more reliable. If I did not know the Durham driver and I did not know the contract driver, I would tend to want to go with my grandchildren riding with the contract driver. McDade told the school board there's not enough time to write up a new RFP or request for proposal to hire a new company. That process takes up to a year, leaving the school board with little choice but to consider extending Durham's contract for another 12 months. From my perspective, this ain't going to happen again. It's not going to happen that I'm sitting up here on a board uh, representing a district and in front of my whole community, I look like a boob because I got people telling me I can't put uh, an RFP out because the window's too tight. The school board also talked with the superintendent's search firm on what they would like to see in a new school leader. Members acknowledged a list of challenges the new superintendent will be facing, such as lawsuits, underperforming schools, and mun mun municipalities threatening to break away from the school district. Board member Tiffany Robinson told the search firm she would like to see a leader with experience. I just think that in order for this person to be successful, it's going to have to be someone who has actually been in this type of role before and it's not basically their first rodeo. There was no vote at this meeting on any of these topics. The school board will meet again for another work session January 12th. I'm Kelly McCarthy, live in the studio, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.